When you're buying a car, first you have to decide what kind of car you want. Is it the one that floats in the air, dodges a meteor shower, avoids a giant sprinkler, or just deals with your shitty kid? The next choice is whether to buy a new car from a dealership, a second-hand car from a dealer, or a second-hand car from a private seller. Each option comes with different consumer protections and different pitfalls. Mmm, come check out this new car smell. Check out the used car smell. I think it's dried yoghurt. Look at this beauty. Manufacturer's warranty couldn't be a safer deal. But are new cars the safe bet? And do they come with better consumer protections? People tend to assume that new cars are going to be more reliable, but they're not necessarily fault-free. A choice survey of over 1,500 new car buyers found that 14% of them had major issues with their new cars, the kind that impaired the car's operation or left it unusable. New cars come with a manufacturer's warranty that should repair factory defects, although they can cover very different periods depending on the manufacturer. Check the terms and conditions carefully. They'll probably require you to undertake regular services, and they will strongly imply that the servicing has to be undertaken by the dealer's mechanic. But that isn't true. You can use a qualified, independent mechanic. We'll fight for the service. Dealers will sometimes try to sell you an extended warranty on a new car for when the manufacturer's warranty runs out. If it's a dealer's extended warranty, they can require you to use their mechanic. Stupid fine print. If your manufacturer's or extended warranty runs out, or they say you're not covered by it, remember that you're also protected by the guarantees in the consumer law. Like all consumer goods, a new car has to be of acceptable quality. If there are so many recurring faults that it spends more time off the road than on it, then it's a major failure and you're entitled to a refund or a replacement. Refund? But spent the commission. Now, the ACCC does admit that sometimes it can be a bit hard to enforce your consumer rights with dealers or manufacturers. The ACCC say this is an area of focus for them and that they've engaged with car sellers. So if you think your consumer rights are being ignored, let them know. Oof, how dodgy. You should get a second-hand car instead. We offer all sorts of protections. <laughs> Your dealer may try and sell you a used car extended warranty or mechanical breakdown insurance. It's like you're reading my mind. These used car warranties can cost anything from a few hundred dollars... Oh, uh, keep going. ...up to a few thousand dollars. But the Consumer Action Law Centre not only warns of loopholes in the fine print and regular servicing requirements, but says that for many of these used car warranties, they are almost completely worthless if they're what's known as a discretionary risk product. And if you're wondering what that means, I'll let Integrity explain it to you. Even if the claim comes within the warranty terms of this booklet, Integrity has absolute discretion as to whether it will or will not pay. If a warranty gives total discretion to the insurer, you should probably avoid it, even if their name is Integrity. Wait, you forgot one thing. Is it that you're offered up to 80% commission for selling these warranties? You can read my mind. But there are other types of warranty that you get when you buy a used car that do offer you some protections. Um, I'll take that one. OK. Used car dealers have to provide a statutory warranty, which means dealers have to fix certain faults for a set time after you buy from them. Yeah, not for all used cars. In most states and territories, in order to qualify for the warranty, car needs to be under 10 years old and have done less than 160,000 kilometres. How long do these used car dealers' statutory warranties last? Uh, well, that depends on where you live, so you really should go back to that magical billboard and check. For most states, it'll cover you for three months or 5,000 kilometres after you bought it. Whatever comes first. Only three months? <laughs> Three months and one day, yes! Why are you even still here? Your statutory warranty has run out in your face! Sure, but don't get too excited because your consumer guarantees don't stop applying just because the car is old or has done a lot of Ks. Yes! When the transmission on a used car failed only three weeks after the purchase, a Victorian consumer tribunal found that car wasn't of acceptable quality, even though it was 11 years old. It had almost 200,000 clicks on it. True, and things like age, mileage and price are factors that will be considered. 
a used car won't be treated the same as a new car. Plus, if you examine the vehicle, you're not protected for defects that should have been apparent, mm -hmm. or if the dealer alerts you to them. Yeah, so that motor, it's just a cat. Hmm. But an examination is not expected to find hidden defects like brake, gearbox or engine fault. Yeah, unless the engine is a cat. Ooh. Back a bit. Elbow hurt car! Road trip! Woo! By the way, in some states there is a cooling off period after you purchase your car. You know, just in case. I'll buy that man. Another thing to be wary of at dealerships, both new and used, is that your purchases may not end with a car salesperson. In fact, at your average car dealership, the new car sales section is the least profitable part, often making a loss. Don't tell them that. Let me introduce you to our finance and insurance division. This is where many car yards make the bulk of their money. Have I got a deal for you. If you need finance, don't even walk into a car dealership until you've checked the rates available elsewhere, including online. And remember, the advertised rate can be very different to the actual comparison rate. Oh, hello. You can spend all this time haggling with a salesperson to save yourself a grand, and then blow that pretty quickly by taking a loan with a higher rate. Sign here. Be wary of pushy salespeople. Last year, BMW's finance division agreed to pay $77 million after their sales culture breached responsible lending provisions. There's nothing wrong with a the sales culture. They gave a 76-year-old man a 50000 buck loan, almost twice the value of his car. Ooh. And they based his ability to repay not on his real income, but on projected earnings. I'd like to emphasise that we are not all BMW. <laughs> New car dealers are so dodgy, eh? These loans were for second-hand cars too. Gotta go! It's not just finance you need to be wise to. ASIC says that by the latter stages of buying a car, you might be suffering from what's known as decision fatigue. What about colour? Grey shadow, Mikado, Xanadu, Jericho, French burgundy, Italian burgundy or red? Mikado, I guess. Great. And now for the trim colour. <laughs> Which means after making so many decisions, your later ones aren't as high quality. How about moon landing insurance? Whatever. So in case you're suffering decision fatigue, here's some things to watch out for. Would you like mechanical insurance or tire and rim insurance? Which dealers get commissions of up to 75% for. How about life insurance? I thought you said the car was safe. Yup, car deals are trying to sell you life insurance, which ASIC has found to be poor value for consumers, with high commissions and low payouts relative to the premium. Thanks very much. Can you do this somewhere else, please? How about pet insurance? And that's not all. You may be offered aftermarket accessories, things like tinting and protection packages. You can see our full story on this on our website. But in summary... Get out! Maybe I should buy from a private seller instead. Buying from a private seller is often the cheapest option, but the consumer guarantees as to acceptable quality don't apply to private sales. So, auto sales at auctions. Now you tell me. Which means you need to be more careful before you hand over any money. So what is she, a V8, a V9? That's the boot, mate. Good boot. You should not only test drive the car, but get it inspected by a mechanic either at their garage, or you can get them to come to the seller's location. You also need to check the car isn't stolen, written off, or has money owing on it. Hey, I don't know anything on the car. That's the beauty of stealing it. Hey, has this car been stolen or written off? I'm kind of busy right now, thanks, mate. You can also find this information at the Personal Property Securities Register, ppsr.gov.au. Remember the .gov.au, otherwise you'll be paying a lot more for the same information. Can you leave, mate? Oh, sorry. If you buy a car with a debt attached to it, you might find that the financier comes to you for the money or to repossess the car. I've thrown in an angry bank manager for free. <sighs> If money is owed, contact the lender. It might mean you have to give some of the money for the car to the lender instead of the seller. Damn it, quite like repossessing. And if you follow those tips, everything should be just fine. Is this engine a cat? Did I not mention that? 